Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. Today, I'm going to give you my top seven worst stocks. My worst stocks for the year. And we're going to do something that's a little fun. At least I hope it's going to be fun. So in the comments with these seven companies, you let me know which one of these that you would actually consider investing in because I'm pretty sure you can name every company on this list. You have recognized this. Maybe you use it as a service or maybe you actually invest in it already. So I would love to, to let to, to hear your thoughts. Yeah, it's down, but I, I'm still going to hold it. Yeah, it's down, but I may actually consider buying. Now, in my estimation, none of these are, uh, are you know, buy the dip companies where uh, it just temporarily fell off. Let me go ahead and get into it. These are uh, these are clips. These are actual issues um, in terms of the stock price. And the reason why I said that is because right now, year to date, from January to today, the 27th of April, 2022, um, a dip would be, I don't know, down like 14, 15%. Because the stock market as a whole is down 12. So you're doing just a little bit worse than the stock market. Uh, 15%. You know, maybe 17, maybe 15. Like, yeah, that's that's a dip. Uh, none of these are close to that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first one, I don't know what order I'll start this at. Um, they're not ranked. Um, so I'll start here. Netflix. Uh, shouldn't be a surprise. They're down 67% this year. Uh, for, for a lot of reasons, they lost subscribers for the first time since 2011. Some of this is because of higher competition, which is true. They also decided not to take on or renew subscribers uh, from Russia. So that's that's negative 700,000 subscribers. So that's some of it. Um, but people aren't Netflixing and chilling the way that they used to. And the world is opening up for the most part. And people are going out and people are sharing passwords. And that's not really helping Netflix or their business. Um, so they're down 67 percent now if you ask me i think it's a little bit of an overreaction should netflix be down logically yes because we're not in the same pandemic we were we were forced to watch tiger king because nothing else was on in a world we have way more options and i can just i don't know go outside um so yeah i could see a world where netflix is down but 67 percent is a lot um they are considering doing a lot of changes we'll see what changes they do over the next several years but uh this is not something that's going to fix itself anytime soon if you ask me it is a long long road ahead uh really just to the end of the year so this could definitely get worse we'll see all right so that, that's netflix uh next is amd they are a chip maker similar to an nvidia they're down 40 percent a little surprising um i guess it shouldn't be because nvidia is down like 37 percent and they kind of run together but man that's that's tough 40 percent. i really don't have much to say past that we are still in a chip shortage we are still using those chips so it you know, in theory, as long as people are using computers and video games and cars, they should be fine. I think this is definitely an overreaction. I am more alarmed that uh, that an AMD is down than a Netflix. It makes sense as to why Netflix is down. I think AMD is unfairly punished, as well as a lot of chip makers. I think they're unfairly punished. Maybe it's due to supply chain or something like that, but shouldn't be down 40%, but it is. The next one here is JP Morgan. It's down 23%. I am mostly shocked by this i understand it now that we're in almost may in end of april going into may i get it now but 23 percent in what was supposed to be what i, I would have called this a, a slam dunk easy stock if you'd asked me in december if you'd asked me in early january in that rates were going up things were expanding people were going back outside you know, you would think the economy is going to expand and with the rising interest rates, it would make easy sense that a bank like JP Morgan or Bank of America or Capital One or any bank should be a, an easy place to put your money. I said as much and that is not happening. And one of the biggest reasons why this is not happening is because a threat of um, recession. Now, I want to do a video on this at some point in time, but there's a lot of headlines about the potential recession of 2022. If the Fed is too aggressive, it's going to push us in, into recession. And those recession fears are preventing people uh, from, from borrowing more. People are, are just kind of tense, like, hey, it could be a recession. I don't want to go and borrow and start a business because if it's going to be recession this year, why would I do that, right? If you're going to launch a business in any year, recession is the worst year to do that, uh, unless your business is helped by recession, which I 
don't see how that would be the case in most places. Um, but in either case, it is down 23%, not something I expected at all, and I am paying the price for it because I own Capital One. Uh, and I think my kids, one of my kids at least has, has a JP Morgan and Bank of America. They, we all had banks, okay? We all had banks. I, we all thought going into this before Russia and Ukraine and before a lot of this, what I would call um, overblown recession fear, that this stock is being un unfairly punished to a, to a degree. However, that being said, that's the best stock on this list. It does not get better than 23%. So, uh... Let's keep going. All right, so next here is Starbucks. I didn't actually know this until I looked it up. Starbucks is down 36%. I cannot tell you why. I really can't tell you why um, just by, by understanding the economy. Yes, there may be some areas where things are being shut down to a degree. Maybe you're running into some supply, supply chain issues. Um, even with inflation, usually people are pretty addicted to their coffee and they have to have it. So for whatever reason, Starbucks down 36% so far this year. Next is another one that stings me personally, and that is CarMax. CarMax is down 31%, and I think they're being somewhat classified as a tech company, which I don't really think they should be. It's a car salesman company, or a car sales company, car retailer, if you will. Last I checked, we still have a chip shortage, which means that used car prices are still high. Are they as high as where they were this time last year? debatable okay i haven't seen any headlines or anything to to justify that or not but i don't think carmack should be down a whole 30 uh, i'm sorry 31 percent so far this year it really hurts i did a video about how one i like carmax i still do i like him as a company um but i would not put my money in i did not put my money in at that time but also we knew from the end of last year and this is why I always say this when I put out these stats is that it worked in the past. It doesn't really predict the future. That the worst stocks in December are usually the best stocks in January. Uh, I don't think that panned out well for Carbax. It was one of the worst stocks back in December. It is still one of the worst stocks so far this year when it comes to the S&P 500. All right. Next one is PayPal. PayPal is down 56%. I don't think it is fair. I don't think it is right. Um... I still haven't found out any good reasons as to why PayPal is down 56%, but a lot of people like PayPal or Square, and sometimes they throw in SoFi into this category as well. But down 56%, it's not fun. It's, again, not fun, not fair, but it is what it is. Down 56% so far this year, and still a lot of the year to go. Then lastly, we have Facebook, aka Meta. They are down 47%. And I did announce earnings today. The headline I saw before recording this video is that it, it the aftermarket shares are up like 10%. So we'll see by the time you watch this tomorrow, if you're not watching tonight, this may be different. Maybe they'll be down 37%. And that kind of reshuffles the list. However, they are down. Um, they are looped into the tech category. They do have some issues with Apple and their privacy setting. And they do have a lot of regulatory scrutiny too. So this one makes some sense. Does it make 47% sense? Probably not, at least not for me. But it does make sense as to why they are negative. Facebook is one of the few companies that I do hold in my personal retirement account, my IRA. So uh, this this one this one probably hurts the most. Yeah, this one this one hurts the most out of all in the list. Uh, my pride is hurt by J.P. Morgan, um, but my pockets ain't hurt. My pockets are hurting because of Facebook. But thankfully, like I teach, I own Microsoft and others that balance things out, including an index fund um, that I have in my IRA too. So still preaching long-term investing. I'm not moving off of Facebook, at least not yet. Come catch me in June. We start to make some adjustments. Uh, but that's that's it. Now, the lesson here, right, and before you give me your answers on which one of these that you would invest in, lesson here is, is look, the entire stock market is down, Okay. The entire stock market is down. Now, are there some areas to profit? Yes, we've talked about those in our defensive stock videos. There, are, I could do a best seven if we want to do that. But sometimes companies go through these weird cycles, or the market punishes certain companies, and we'll see where they where they are. 2023, 2024, 2025. And you have to decide on whether A, you're going to just skip these entire stocks, or if there is one that you think is actually worth it and one that will stand the test of time. And some of these I, I think will. Like, I don't think uh, that a JP Morgan is going bankrupt. 
I don't think that Starbucks is going bankrupt. I and mean, just because the stock is down doesn't mean that those companies are even close to bankruptcy. It's just it, the Wall Street feels, right? Investors feel that the company is worth less, even though they may have tons and tons of cash. So keep that in mind too. We just saw um, Google. Google dropped. Um, it was close to four or five percent at least when I got the alert on my phone, and they got seventy billion dollars to spend on in, on themselves. So no, the company is not going broke, but the market views the stock in a particular way and whether that's good or bad you have to determine for yourself some people and i'm not here to tell you any of these on this list but some people feel look this is a prime time for me to continue to buy low and set myself up for the next two three four years realize the time frame that i'm giving you i'm not telling you that anything on this list number one i'm not telling you to buy anything on this list because this is bad Okay, so that's number one. If I was going to tell you to buy anything, it would be to buy defense if you're looking to make money this year. Um, but if you're looking to set yourself up for the future, something like this might be appropriate. And most importantly here, you always want to set that time frame and the expectation up to say, look, this is something I'm really going to really check my account in two years, in three years, in four years or more because something that's down this bad for the most part, maybe not JP Morgan, but something that's down this bad, when it's down 30, 40, 50%, it can take a while to recover. But also know there's a chance that it might not even. All right, that is it for me today. Let me know which one of these companies, pick one, don't say all, don't say none, pick one company that you would consider investing in. Even if your answer is no, just say, hey, look, if I had to choose, this is the one I would pick. Uh, if you were asking me, um, I would probably say Starbucks. Um, I kind of lean towards JP Morgan because I know they're not going anywhere either. And they're the one that has the least amount of ground to cover to, to break even at 23%. Um, but I'm, I'm going Starbucks. It's, it's more consumer friendly. And I just know y'all not y'all not letting go of Starbucks. Y'all going to be in there buying them lattes. Um, so that's, that's the one I would personally go with. I don't own either of those. Um, and I don't plan on getting in any of these either. Um, but that's the one I would pick. All right, that's it for me. I'll talk to you later. Bye.